was at Long Bay from about 1990, end of 92 to end of 93, early 94. Um, I was at what was called the MRP, Metropolitan Reception Prison. And um, we just had it so good there, you know. We uh, we had every, we just had everything, you know. You could, there was plenty of, like I don't drink alcohol, but there was plenty of alcohol, there was plenty of drugs there for people who took drugs. I, I never used drugs while I was in prison. and. Um, I don't know, everyone had a raw, there was all sorts of shenanigans going on. I remember Tony Hines, the well-known Tony Hines from the Eastern Suburbs who got killed. Uh, there's the documentary, The Bra Boys, who, they, uh, who uh, one of the Abbotons killed. I remember him sending me an invite to a Christmas party. It was a proper invite from outside that, and it had RSVP and it said casual dress or dirt will be served and light snacks and fucking casual dress or whatever. So, so I went up to this, Christmas party and he had the bunk beds, he had like a bunk bed out of the cell and the mattresses were out of the cell and it was like all oysters, prawns, lobster, uh, all different types of food, olives and that sort of on the bottom bunk. And up in the top bunk there was every alcohol known to mankind, there was fucking Jack Daniels, there was Blue Label, Johnny Walker Scotch, there was, and then he had like ice bucket with champagne and that and then drinking it out of champagne flutes and he's playing classical music and, and people are just hanging around the front of the cells, you know what I mean? That was that, that sort of place, there was that much. I know blokes used to have that much pot there. They used to do these jokes, they'd get these young fellas and they'd call them in the cell and give them a cone and just kept a half pie stand over them to keep going with the cones until they greened out and they just fucking couldn't move and they'd be going, mate, don't treat us like dickheads, keep going, keep going. It was just that fucking, there was so much of everything there. And I remember the screws would come out and go, like if any of the boys were playing up, they'd say, if you fucking keep playing up, there'll be no visits. And you know what no visits mean? No drugs, but the screws were all bringing the drugs in. So everyone just had, everyone had a couple of screws on the tape that were bringing in every, and like it used to cost you a hundred bucks for a sports bag of whatever you wanted to bring in, as long as it wasn't weapons. And um, it was funny, even you, it was funny, you'd see the screws coming in on their shift and everyone would have their bags who they were going to drop them off to. Like they were just all in on it. And you know what? I never seen no drama. I seen no fights in that jail in two years because everyone loved it there and everyone wanted to stay. Everyone just knew it was so good. There was fucking porn. Like there was, you got video channels. There was like two porn channels. There was boxing channels. There was fucking just all different types of fucking channels for the TV. Um, food, like, you know, I can remember having a Weber barbecue in my cell up in a top cupboard with a fan to blow the smoke out, cooking fucking Wagyu fucking beef steaks and looking down at my cellmate who was a really high profile drug trafficker at the time. He was on the, um, one of the big brick phones, the first mobile phones, buying a shitload of silk from China, drinking, sipping Remy Martin, Remy Martin cognac, you know, and just, I remember looking down on that, looking down, because I'm standing on this cupboard, because I'm right, because the, 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 the window of the cell's like a me, uh, two meters up, two or three meters up, so there's a bit of, like a window so you gotta blow the smoke out of the weather with the fan so you don't get smoked out in the cell and just fucking looking down and going fuck how easy is this you know what i mean and um well you know i'd have another mate that would come up from um from another jail and would be moving the cell with me on a friday night and i'd say you want beer and he'd go oh, fucking beer and he'd laugh at it and i'd grab an esky out of the fridge and i have like a six pack of heineken because i don't drink but i'd have them in the fridge and he'd go, oh, I bet you're going to say you want a cone next. And I'd say, oh, I've got some of that as well. I had a bit of everything, you know what I mean? So I'd pull out some bowl and I'd say, there you go, mate. There's a bowl, brand new bowl. I'd say, fuck it, that's what you want. And I'd hash and, you know, everything was done with, you know, oh, it was, you know, it was the, the, the transactions weren't done. They were done with like pot or hash or whatever. It was like, there's a hundred dollar block of hash, go and buy yourself a buyer or, I mean, it was just amazing. We had an outside football team. We raised twenty thousand dollars for Bear Cottage Children's Hospice while we were there. Um, had fundraisers. We had the NRL teams come in and play uh, the Crims, and, and um, that was it was just it was just really good gym, really good living, really good education, and you know, and and that was as close to rehabilitation I've ever seen because you know you could do a fitness leaders course, you could spend your day in activity, doing all, all sorts of. Um, all sorts of fucking uh, uh, courses and that sort of stuff. You could do trades. We had a bakery where, um, you know, they made pies and that and you could fucking, if you went and got that job, you end up being real fat. But um, 
in sewing machine shops where we were making stuff for Hot Tuna and different surf brands and that sort of stuff. So everyone was getting around in this fucking surf brand. And I can remember Tony Hines was good mates with David Gingell. And at the time, David Gingell owned a series of fucking uh, uh, surf stores around. And I think they were all in Sydney airports. And he said to Ging, he said, oh, I need some green clothes. And Greg Ging sent about six big fucking boxes of fucking green clothes. So everyone had these rip curl. And I was like, everyone was, it's pretty good. And when you're in prison, your shoes are like your car out here. It's like, if you've got a nice pair of shoes, you've got a Ferrari, you know? And, um, you know, everyone had fucking 10 pairs of shoes. Everyone had every Sergio Tarantini tracksuits. It was like something out of a fucking country, country club from, I don't know, uh, the Hamptons in America, you know, how everyone dressed. And, um, you know, I know this one bloke who was doing life and, he, you know, he was doing, so he had to do 15 years and he had two kids. He'd been in for eight years and he had three, two, two kids under the age of five that were conceived on visits. You know, um, and they were his kids. They were just to spit out of his mouth. You, there was no denying that they were his kids. And um, yeah, it was the easiest job I'd done. And no one wanted to get tipped from there. No one wanted to get moved from there because it was just so good. It was so relaxed. The screws sort of, they realized they were on a good thing. They realized, one, they were making extra money. You know, they could make an extra couple of grand a week or whatever. And they were paying the fucking mortgage off a lot quicker. And two, they realized that their job wasn't that tough they'd be playing sport they'd be training with crims and man it was just so fucking easy it was so it was just i don't know why they created the way they created these days so tense that was a classic example how thing how easy their job can be it's just and they used to fucking you know go in a screw's office he'd be asleep on the floor with a fucking pillow and he'd give you the keys and go oh, go and unlock your own cell you know and that's how it went down it was crazy oh you know i remember once trying to get in the wing once and, and I went around to the back entrance and the back entrance is a shed of showers and there's a, 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 a screw with the headgear on and boxing gear punching on with a fucking crim and that's how they just sorted the fucking problems out. Shook hands at the end of it and off they went, you know. And just, yeah, and I, and I think, and nothing, look, no one got hurt there. No one got hurt. No one got traumatized. It was just fucking, everyone looked back on it and said that was the easiest job I've ever done. And anyone that went through that system goes, remember them days, man, remember how good that was. And, and I guess, you know, from my perspective, you know what I mean? Not being called a fucking, you know, a, you know, a, a grub and all of them things that these real evil ones, like everyone, they talk to you civilly. The screws called you by your first name. It was, man, it was something else, man. I had fond memories of that.